It's been seven years since we last saw a new adventure from Sly Cooper and his lovable band of anthropomorphic thieves, and for a while it seemed he'd found retirement preferable to merely laying low. Now he's back, and developer Sansaru proves that they're worthy of picking up the torch from Sucker Punch. Sly Cooper Thieves in Time feels remarkably similar to its predecessors, and that's by no means a mark against it. Instead, it reminds us why so many loved Sly in the first place. You're not going to start wearing that mustache all the time, are you? Jealousy is such an ugly emotion, Sly. The story cleverly acknowledges Sly's long hiatus, weaving quips about being out of practice into the tutorials and focusing on how much the crew has missed their former life of crime. Yet this is no simple reunion. Darker themes abound. Both Sly and his turtle companion Bentley see their love interests gone missing, and vanishing pages from the Thievus Raccoonus hint at alterations in Sly's family history. With the help of Bentley's new time machine, the ensuing story arc yanks the crew across eras as diverse as the Ice Age and both medieval England and Arabia, along with stops in feudal Japan and the Old West. Well, that was a blast. <laughs> All of this time skipping creates a wonderful sense of variety, not only in terms of setting, but also in the way each era unlocks new playable Cooper ancestors with their own abilities. Ryoichi Cooper, Sly's Japanese ancestor, can bound across distances with the grace of a ninja, and the outlaw Tennessee Cooper can transform the family's signature cane into a pistol. Not only are all five fun to play thanks to responsive controls, but they shine in Thieves in Time's presentation, which combines memorable voice work and cartoon-style imagery to create the sense that you're playing through an 80s animated series. I had a lot of explaining to do. It may be steadfastly lighthearted fare, filled with pop culture references and stereotypes that never quite veer toward offensive, but it excels in the way it sprinkles tidbits of humanity into the wider story of rescue and heroism. In one sequence, Bentley and his towering hippo buddy, the Murray, catch fish with a minigame to make up for the destruction of Ryoichi Cooper's sushi restaurant. In another, the Murray struggles with the realization that he's no longer the only strong man in the crew, with the lumbering Bob Cooper on the scene. Okay, Murray, you're up! The Murray is always on, Bentley! That's not to say that Sly's ancestors always outshine him and his friends. Sansaro does a good job of delivering a balanced selection of missions for every character, and you're free to explore every stage with the unlocked character of your choice to hunt down rare treasures and coins. Much of the gameplay still centers around Sly, however, and his pickpocketing and stealth missions remain one of the chief attractions. In Thieves in Time, Sly's ability to use costumes from each period further enhances the gameplay, particularly in the later stages. The Murray's punching and kicking missions tend to pale in comparison, but Sansaro makes up for this simpler gameplay by placing him in outlandish situations that successfully incorporate other mechanics. Bentley the Brains has his share of wheelchair combat action, but he's most utilized in a surprisingly wide selection of minigames that usually focus on his attempts to hack into computers via side-scrolling shooters. In time, even Sly's fiery love interest, Carmelita Fox, becomes a playable character, complete with her own storyline. And the next thing I knew, I was playing cowboys and criminals. But if it's a challenge you're looking for, you'll only find it here in small doses. Checkpoints are frequent and forgiving, and a handful of the minigames, such as Bentley's attempt at sarsaparilla bartending, actually surpass the core combat in terms of sheer difficulty. What challenge there is usually occurs in the boss fights, which tend to demand perfectly timed uses of Sly's costumes. Elsewhere, a thimbleful of minor flaws mar the experience, such as repetitive photography missions and the rare instance of voice dialogue that fails to activate. Even the story sequences, which are excellent on the whole, can also drag on, and the boss fights usually come right at the moment when you've had as much of a level as you can stand. Wait until I tell the general about this. I hear he loves pork chops. Still, Sly Cooper's lightweight brand of stealth gameplay stands on its own in a world awed by Mark of the Ninja and Dishonored, and the diversity of its cartoony action at times outshines that found in the similar Ratchet and Clank games. The Vita crossover feature allows for almost seamless alternations between portable and console gameplay. In fact, the lush visuals of Thieves in Time tend to fare better on the Vita. Yet the most satisfying achievement of Thieves in Time is that this isn't a mere nostalgia trip like 2010's Sly Collection. With Thieves in Time, Sansaru has proven that there's never been a better time to join forces with Sly and his merry band.
See this and other GT shows and game reviews on the GT Originals iOS app, available now on the App Store.